Hi guys, Elle here, welcome back. So happy almost Yule, and in honor of the holiday season, we have the Fragile leg lamp, because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> So I just posted the tarot news videos, and I love I get all these comments from everyone. It's hilarious going like, screw you, my wish list is freaking out of control now. Um, and I feel ya, because imagine sitting there and putting all that information together and researching all these amazing decks. My wish list is ridiculously out of control at the moment, too. But this next deck is one that really caught my attention. Uh, and screwed up to the top of my wish list since I made the, the Terra News video. And it's not the type of deck that I am normally drawn to. It's very different. Um, I'm very excited to share it with you guys. And this deck just came in the mail a few days ago. The cards are still in order and everything. This is like almost an unboxing. By the way, don't mind my disgusting hands. If you know anyone that works in a salon during the holidays, their hands are probably... <laughs> just as gross, if not grosser than mine. <laughs> it's like hair color everywhere. Anyway, this is the Little Monsters Tarot. It comes in this adorable little box. And the back looks like that. The Little Monsters Tarot, 78 card tarot deck illustrated by Peony Coin Archer. And the other woman involved is Olivia Pepper who uh, wrote the guidebook and, and all that. And they've actually both worked on a couple of other decks, by the way, the Efflorescent Tarot, which has been really popular. It came out back in 2011, uh, is their other full 78 card tarot deck. Uh, and they also have like a, a crystal deck, what's it called? Crystal Portraits. It's a 48 card oracle deck uh, with drawings of crystals. It's, it's a very pretty deck also. And I personally have always loved the Efflorescent Tarot. Uh, I just, just something about the artwork. I always thought it was beautiful, but I never went ahead and picked it up uh, because I was just sort of like, I don't need another Rider Waite Smith kind of clone deck. So really, when I saw this deck that has that same kind of style artwork that she has, I was very, very excited. Uh, and now this is still a Rider Waite Smith style deck. Like, they didn't completely re-envision every tarot image, like something like the Mary L does, where everything looks completely, completely different. Uh, they still stuck close with a lot of the symbolism uh, and a lot of the, the imagery still, you know, feels Rider Waite Smith, but it's, it's done in a, in a different way that, that gives you something new and something unique. So this is the card backs. By the way, I was very surprised. Uh, I, I, I mean, I read the dimensions of the cards. They are actually for this deck 3.6 by 2.5, but I can never like sort of picture how it's gonna look in my hand until I actually get it. Uh, they're efflorescent tarot. It's not the same size as that deck. That deck is, I wrote it down, 3.5 by five. So that deck's even a little bit on the big side for tarot cards. Um, just slightly. Uh, but this deck is definitely kind of small. Here, I'm going to do a quick size comparison so you guys can see. Like, here's a standard Centennial Rider Waite Smith, pretty much standard tarot card size. Look at that. They're really kind of teeny. Um, is it a mini deck? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I don't think it, I wouldn't call it a mini deck, really. Actually, here's a Low Scarabeo mini size. And you can tell it's not Low Scarabeo mini. They're much, much bigger than that. So they're actually really close in size to, this is the one that, the Centennial that comes in the tin, the US Games tin size cards. Look at that. They're pretty close. It's maybe like a half inch wider and they're almost the same, almost the same uh, length. Uh, the, the US Games tin has just a, a hair, it's just a hair longer. But that's pretty, that's what you're kind of looking at here with this deck. And, you know, if you read tarot cards, you know sometimes it's just lovely to have a smaller deck to work with. It fits fantastic in my smaller hands. Uh, and I like the backs. They really are, are they completely reversible? They're not technically completely reversible. Like, if you get to know it, you'll be able to tell which is up and down. But it's nothing that jumps out at you. Very simple, starry night sky backs, and everything, including the backs of the cards, exists in these cute little oval things. Ready? Check it out! So there's an oval around each and every one of the images. That little scuff, I'm sure I put there already. But check out the artwork, guys. I actually really love that this is black and white, too. 
Um, there are two versions of their other tarot deck, the efflorescent, right? You have the colored version and the black and white version. And I think they're both pretty. This isn't the kind of deck, though, I think that, like with my wild unknown, how some of the cards are colored in that deck and some are just black and white, at least with the first edition, uh, I went and took some, some markers and whatnot and colored in those, those black and white cards. But I don't think I would do anything to this one. Look at the, the infinity... And this, this character here on the Magician card, they're not numbered, by the way, the Major Arcana. Um, but this one looks a little bit more more human. There's very few that actually read as kind of human. They're all these amazing little creatures. Like, look at this High Priestess. I have no idea what she is. She looks like she has a bit of a hamster face. <laughs> but you have your, um, your two columns and... And she's even got uh, a crescent moon on her on her forehead there. Can you see that? And she's titled the High Priestess. I love the writing. Like it's so friggin' cute, but not too cutesy, you know. It, it still feels like a, a very grown-up deck, and I love this Empress. Isn't she gorgeous? Here's your Emperor, very stern-looking. Okay, there's a few characters in here that really look like this guy, um, with the, the long, weird neck and the, the dark face, almost peeking out from a hood or something. This always reminds me of like that anime, uh, like things you'd see in, in Miyazaki movies or something. I love. But the other thing I think that's interesting is that, um, like, not they don't all read like. Like they're from Asian fairy tales, or or like they're all from Celtic myth or fairy tales or things like that. Like they feel very universal. Like they're from all over the world, and some are wholly unique uh, images and creatures. <laughs> I love that. That's the chariot. It's like this dude is riding on something cloaked. You see that? Here is strength. Look at that creature. I get They're so cool. So I did flip through the cards already, like, just one time, really. But uh, there's nothing in it that jumps out at me that would make this deck hard to read, uh, like, for kids. Like, this, you could use this one for kids, absolutely. But it certainly isn't a childish uh, deck. It actually feels very grown up to me. But I feel like you could use it for kind of anything. It's, I feel like it would be fine for any kind of reading, even a, a more spiritual reading or a love reading or work. Uh, I would think that it would lend itself really, really well to any kind of a creativity reading, you know, something like that or, or personal growth, that kind of stuff. Um, but it, it still, it feels like a, a deck you can use for anything. Look at that temperance. Are we a little out of order here? Yeah, next comes death. <laughs> little out of order, that's okay. I actually like that they've included the rose from the Rider Waite Smith on the flag. Isn't that cool? So there's a couple of things I've noticed since it is a, like a self-published kind of a deck. The ovals definitely aren't always centered on every single card. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on these two. Yeah, like some are a little bit closer to the bottom, some are up. It's nothing that... um really, really jumps out at you, but when I, if you lay them out, you'll see the ovals sort of bounce around a little bit. Uh, and also, I'm not holding them perfectly at the moment, but they're not cut, uh, like, perfectly, all the cards. There's a lot that stick out a little bit more, mostly at the corners, I feel it. Um, like, you can even see if I hold that guy, look at that corner, he's not perfectly rounded. Like, I might even go back in with my scissors and just round some of the corners a little bit more so they don't stick out quite as much on some of the cards. But it's not. It's not a big deal. Even the devil isn't scary. Look, he's kind of happy. He's a happy little devil. Little <laughs> bear claws. The details are wonderful. Those little bees or flies buzzing around him. Oh, the tower looks like it's right out of, like, the never-ending story or something, right? Like, floating in space. And there's these little, like, what are they? Like, little, they look, they remind me of, like, the, 
I forget what they're called, like the monkey people from the Wizard of Oz. I'm <laughs> sending lightning bolts at the tower. Isn't that neat? And I actually really like these three cards, the star, the moon, and the sun. <laughs> they're not in order. <laughs> I think they came this way. Um, but the moon, the star, and the sun are all like people-y sort of, but the images are on their cloaks. This is one of the cards that really drew me to this deck, this moon card with the moon phases on the dark cloak. And then for the stars, she's in a starry cloak. It's like a compass. And then the sun, look at that. Like looking up and this fiery sun on the cloak of this, this person, creature. It's such a unique tarot deck. I'm so into it. That's a cool way to portray judgment. Isn't that neat? And your world card. All the aces are very simple like this. They've kept wands, cups, and coins, by the way, for the suits. Uh, and then it's arrows for the swords. You'll see it's the last suit. It's super, super cute. Two of wands. Very Rider Waite Smith on the three. There's very few cards, honestly, that feel like they're like right out of the Rider Waite Smith. How cute is that? They look like owl people to me or something. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this is one of my favorite cards, too. Look at that five of wands. Aren't they neat? Miss Archer, I just adore your artwork. I adore it. I really like this guy, too. He's like a birdie guy. <laughs> He's like a baby bird. If you hear clawing and flapping and all sorts of strange shit in the background of this video, my pets are going insane. My tortoise is an escape artist, <laughs> and my bird wants attention. <laughs> Isn't that cool? No, like, they have lots of wings. Look at these birds on the Eight of Wands. <laughs> this one's really cute, too. <laughs> so this deck does actually have a guidebook that you can get with it. Uh, you can get the deck just itself on Etsy. I'll put the link down below for $25, which is what I did. It's the holiday season. I was trying to save some money. How cute is that? <laughs> um, so I didn't get the guidebook with it. I might go back and download for $5 a digital version of the guidebook. Because I am really curious to see what the thought was behind a lot of these little creatures. I think that'll be fun. Um, but also for $35, if you do an extra 10 with the deck, you can get like a nice printed guidebook with it also. Okay, how cool is that for the Queen of Wands? This alien looking woman. Oh my God, I love. <laughs> and you get classic sunflowers. By the way, let me go back one. Oh, go back two, just kidding. The page, pages are called Child, Child of Wands. And then everything else actually stays the same. So it's Child, then Knight, then Queen and king and then here's another beautiful ace your ace of cups isn't that neat some of them are like really really detailed like that and some a little bit more simple i guess the whole thing reads a little bit on the simple side but i, I like that it makes for a, a clean read i guess two of cups oh, i really like these guys check them out they remind me of like walrus mermaid people <laughs> so freaking creative. Four of Cups. That's another really good one. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Five of Cups. It's like a water thing. <laughs> I needed a fun tarot deck, guys. Something lighthearted, easy to get on with. And it wasn't the same thing sort of over and over and over again, you know? It's it's not a, a clone deck. It's not a Rider-Waite-Smith clone. I really like what they did, how they reinterpreted the Eight of Cups here. 
or how she reinterpreted the Eight of Cups. He's still up. You can tell that's actually a person, like, walking away under the moon. <laughs> and then you saw the cups stacked at the bottom. So it's very reminiscent of a Rider Waite Smith, but it, it looks completely different. Nine of Cups. Ten of Cups. Oh, this is one of my favorites, too. Look at that child of cups. How cute. <laughs> this is, it's like a deck for for the weird little girl in all of us. <laughs> That's how it makes me feel. The detail on this one is really nuts. Check this out. Look at that. And although, like, like I said, the images don't seem to come from, like, one place specifically they're not from one story or one area of the world i feel like i know these little creatures <laughs> and maybe it's just the way she has of of drawing them they all feel familiar a little bit or relatable even though i can't quite place them like it's all the the same weird little creatures that that come from our collective unconscious or something like that Isn't that great? I really, really like this deck, you guys. It is so fun. <laughs> Celebrate your weirdness. Isn't that one cool, too? Five of Coins. And even though they're like black and white kind of line drawing things, there is there is a lot going on. Although it doesn't look like there's too much going on, there's a lot going on. And I think it, it would make, I think it will make for a really fun deck to read with. Um, they're not just stick figures, you know, there's, there's a scene still and, and a lot of detail that you can hone in on or focus in on if, if you really rely on the images and when you're reading tarot. Look at that. And here's your child of coins or your page of coins. He reminds me of one of those like Grateful Dead bears a little bit. <laughs> Knight of coins. Look. <laughs> So good. Queen of coins. And your king. Focus. I can't. Okay, so this is the last suit here, and instead of swords, we have arrows. Which just works so good with this deck. I love the way she drew the arrows. Look at that, two of arrows. Three of arrows. I think he's got like tentacle arms for the four of arrows. Like it could almost go to a, a, a creepy place, but it doesn't ever quite cross the line. It's like my kind of creepy. I can't handle anything that's, at least not in a tarot deck, things that are like really almost disturbing or, you know, creepy, creepy. It, this is just like fun, weird, a little creepy. I don't know, it just doesn't go too far into the creepy, it doesn't go too far into the cutesy. Like, there's a, look at this. Like, it's evocative, it really is. It makes me feel something with these cute, weird little drawings. <laughs> it's my weird deck, I love it. I just, that's what I'm going with. Eight of arrows, look at her eyeballs bugging out, I love her. <laughs> Nine of arrows. And ten. I still have not been able to figure out exactly. This is why I need the guidebook, I think. What is going on with this one? It almost looks like she's got a target instead of a face. I don't know. It's cool looking, though. I have to sit with that one a little bit more. Uh, child of arrows. I love how they're all they have the same sort of body shape. This amorphic kind of not fully formed feeling yet to all the the pages or the children uh, in each suit. 
And that just does not just lend itself to the to the meaning. I enjoy that. Smart choice. And here's your Knight of Arrows. Very giraffe <laughs> And your Queen. She's really fun and pretty. And your King. King of Arrows. And then we're back to our Fool. Alright, taking a look at that Fool. Let me give you a close-up here. How gorgeous. <laughs> this one you can really tell actually that the oval moves around quite a bit. See how much further down. And they just bounce around a little bit. It's it's nothing crazy. Uh, but that is the Little Monsters Tarot. Comes with that nice little cardboard box, but I don't think I'm going to keep it in the box because then I can't throw it around as much. I think, let's see if he fits in my bag here. Got this all set up for him. Oh yeah, that's a good fit. Check it out. I added some color. <laughs> and that pendant was, that beautiful sacred geometry pendant I have on there was a gift from a viewer. Thank you, my love. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. That was the Little Monsters Tarot. I'll see y'all real soon. Bye.